Good morning and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in Boston. We're the daily podcast that gets you started on the right foot and always with a positive vibe. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Tuesday, November 21st. The week is getting shorter by the minute. You'll be interested to know today is National Entrepreneur Day. National Entrepreneur's Day is an annual event occurring on the third Tuesday of November that honors people who have built an empire from absolutely nothing. Radical inventions by brilliant minds have shaped the way we live today, not to mention our future. So on that note, here's some info about a fairly important invention. The electric stove, popular for cooking and baking, replaced solid fuel stoves in the 1930s. Early patents date back to 1859 with Canadian inventor Thomas A. Hearn filing a patent in 1892. And now we can thank him for helping us make our turkey this year. Two more days, people. Now let's check out the weather in our area. This morning, it's sunny and feels like 20 degrees with 66% humidity. Tonight, the sun will set at 4.17 p.m., and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.43 a.m. It looks like we are in for a day of increasing clouds with a high near 41. Light and variable wind becoming southeast five to eight miles per hour in the afternoon. Tonight, rain mainly after 1 a.m., low around 37. Southeast wind eight to 14 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 100%. New precipitation amounts between a quarter and half of an inch possible. New England faces a chilly Thanksgiving week with a high pressure system bringing unseasonably cold air. Tuesday starts sunny, but clouds increase ahead of a low pressure system, bringing snow inland and rain on the coast Wednesday, causing travel disruptions. Thanksgiving will be quieter, followed by a cool Friday and Saturday with potential snow showers next weekend. The first high tide today will be at nine feet, right around 5.30 a.m. with a one foot low tide at 11 a.m. The nearshore buoy at Cape Cod Bay reads 52 degrees for the water temperature. In the national weather, a storm system to impact the south to the northeast ahead of Thanksgiving, high winds in Southern California. A storm system will move from the Southern Plains to the Northeast U.S through Wednesday with severe thunderstorms for the northern Gulf states, gusty winds and heavy rain for the southeast, and a wintry mix for the interior northeast. Strong offshore Santa Ana winds with gusts over 60 miles per hour are forecast in Southern California. And now a greeting from our sponsor. Bonjour, food enthusiasts. This podcast is brought to you by Versailles Cafe and Pastries in Encinitas, Nestled on El Camino Real, south, just north of Encinitas Boulevard, this cafe is a haven for culinary delights. Indulge in the divine experience of their amazing Eggs Benedict or their gluten-free crepes. You can grab a panini during lunch or just breeze through to get your morning coffee. They are open every day from 8 to 5, so stop on by and grab a coffee and pastry to go. And don't forget to tell them Sunny sent you. Let's switch over to transportation and check out the planes, trains, and automobiles for a moment. For Thanksgiving travel in the Boston area, Massachusetts highway officials advise early morning or late night travel to avoid congestion. AAA estimates 55.4 million Americans will travel 50 miles or more, with 4.7 million flying. Mass Department of Transportation aims to ease congestion with no scheduled construction work on major roads from November 21 to November 27. The HOV lane on I-93 will extend hours on November 21 and November 22. Commuter rail lines will operate on a weekend schedule on Thanksgiving Day. Good news, gas prices are down slightly. If you're driving, plan ahead. Peak congestion will be Wednesday, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Everyone be safe and remember to stay patient. Now on to some national news. The government is spreading holiday cheer by offering an extra set of four free COVID tests per household. Just hop on over to covid-tests.gov to order. 
With winter approaching and COVID cases doing their snow dance, it's the perfect time to stock up. Since September, 14.5 million households have snagged tests, totaling a whopping 58 million shipped. Grab your free tests and keep your loved ones safe as you jingle all the way through the holiday season. And now for some sports scores. On Monday Night Football, oh baby, did we get a good one. Back and forth all night. Big plays and a little precipitation. This one went down to the wire. Mahomes and Hertz put on a show, but Mahomes receivers could not hold on to the ball when it mattered most, dropping two huge passes in the last three minutes of the game. The Eagles took the win in Arrowhead 21 to 17. That was a big time road win. The Eagles are now nine and one. The Chiefs are seven and three. And for the rest of the week, we have three games coming on Thursday. And for the first time ever, we are getting a game on Black Friday as well. Moving on to the NBA. The Celtics playing on the road in Charlotte fell to the Hornets, 121 to 118. Boston's Peyton Pritchard, despite a slow start in shooting, broke out with a season high 21 points in a game against the Charlotte Hornets. Pritchard, known for his sharp shooting, struggled earlier in the season with a 24.4% success rate on three pointers. However, in the recent game, he went five for eight on three pointers and showcased his scoring ability. The bench heavy lineup, including Pritchard, made a significant impact in the fourth quarter, but not enough to win. The Beast didn't fare very well on the road either, losing to the Tampa Lightning five to four. In a thrilling match, the Tampa Bay Lightning secured a five to four victory over the Eastern Conference leading Boston Bruins. Steven Stamka scored the tying goal with just 4.8 seconds left in regulation, setting the stage for Brandon Hagel's game winner in overtime. Tanner Ginott, Nicholas Paul, and Austin Watson also contributed goals for the Lightning, while Jonas Johansson made 22 saves. Despite the Bruins' goals from Pavel Zacha, David Pasternak, John Beecher, and Charlie Coyle, Jeremy Swayman's 41 saves were not enough to secure the win for Boston. The game featured intense back and forth action with multiple lead changes and late game heroics. Now, let's talk science for a moment. Have you heard of CRISPR? No? Well, now you have. It's an acronym which stands for Clustered, Regularly, Interspaced, Short Palindromic Repeats. Wah, wah, what? Let me break that down for you. CRISPR Therapeutics, based in Switzerland, is a biotech company deploying gene editing for medicines targeting common diseases. They are able to isolate and modify specific genes with their technology. In a groundbreaking move, the United Kingdom's medicines regulator has just approved a therapy utilizing the CRISPR gene editing tool for treating sickle cell disease. Hailed as a landmark approval, it signifies a significant stride in applying CRISPR therapies to potentially cure various genetic diseases. The company's stock is up 30% in the last week. And now what to look out for in the stock market this week. In a significant turn of events, Microsoft's strategic move to enlist Sam Altman, the recently ousted open eyed luminary, is receiving a standing ovation from Wall Street. Altman, along with co-founder Greg Brockman, is set to lead Microsoft's innovative AI research team, marking a surprising twist in this tech narrative. Analysts, including RBC Capital Markets' Rishi Joluria, are hailing it as a huge coup for Microsoft, elevating the tech giant's position in the generative AI realm. Microsoft stock soared to an all-time high, closing at $377.44 of more than 2%, showcasing investor confidence in this game-changing alliance. Altman was removed from his previous company, OpenAI, over the weekend. That is the company behind the widely popular ChatGPT, AI tool. Hum, I think, I have heard of them. Moving on to more of a local vibe in our community spotlight. We are working with local yoga studios to bring you some free classes. 
Here's what we love about yoga. Yoga embraces a comprehensive health strategy, fostering flexibility, reducing stress, and enhancing mental well-being. Combining physical activity and mindfulness, it positively impacts vitality. Scientific studies affirm its benefits, linking yoga to improved heart health, lowered blood pressure, and enhanced sleep. It's a well-supported avenue for physical and mental well-being in just a few mindful minutes daily. So keep an ear out in the coming weeks for your opportunity to try out some local spots and get the blood pumping. Namaste, my friends. And in entertainment news, Dune, part two, is set to make ways with its exclusive release in the IMAX 70 millimeters format, a cinematic experience recently popularized by Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Following the footsteps of Nolan's blockbuster, Dune, part two, the second installment of the adaptation of Frank Herbert's sci-fi novel, will grace IMAX screens for two to three weeks with a possibility of extension based on its reception. While Nolan shot Oppenheimer on film, the Dune director opted for digital, promising an immersive experience for cinephiles despite the technical difference. The film's release date has been moved up to March 1, 2024. Also, I feel compelled to let you know, today, Oppenheimer should be available to stream at home if you were not able to catch it in the theaters. Christopher Nolan movies are always worth a watch, if not several. Well, alrighty, folks, it's time for the thought of the day. All the beautiful sentiments in the world weigh less than a single lovely action. That was said by James Russell Lowell, an American romantic poet. Beautiful words, Mr. Lowell. Just a few more days of work, and then we can take a bit of a mental break, okay? And that's a wrap for this morning. Remember to stay tuned tomorrow for more news and updates. Have an amazing day, my friends. Whether you're heading to work, an event, or just enjoying the day, stay safe and enjoy your day to the fullest. We'll be back tomorrow with another Sunny Mornings podcast. Thanks for tuning in.